Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm a moving away pretty soon. <laughs> but for now, we're trying to help Sunday Symposium. And I, it is my pleasure to introduce today's speaker, Teresa Campos. She, uh, Ter Teresa is a spiritual teacher, intuitive guide, and astrologer. But her, today's presentation is mostly about in which direction our country is moving to, correct? Teresa actually, Teresa's mission is to help awaken and evolve humanity. She is deeply committed to raising our planet's consciousness and assisting others in achieving an ever increasing awareness and reverence for all life, starting with the self. Teresa works with individuals who want to break through old patterns that have them stuck in living the life they do not want. She helps them heal and transform into new life that makes them feel fully alive. Teresa's practice uh, uh, consists of one-on-one -on -one coaching, group coaching, workshops, and retreats to Mount Shasta and Sonoran Desert. In her free time, Teresa actually is a great athlete. She actually participates in triathlon called Ironman, and she is the Ironman fin finisher. With my great pleasure, here is Teresa Campos. Thank you. So we are living right now in a very pivotal time. We are struggling to heal our wounds from the past, the present, and trying to figure out how to merge ourselves forward. Is my sound okay? Okay. And the one thing I think that we all can agree on is that we want change to happen. But the one thing that we tend to struggle with is what that change is going to look like. And also, do we really want to change, even though we say that we want to? So today I'm going to be talking about the chart of the United States. And I'm going to break it down for you in a way that I believe that's going to be really helpful for you to understand um, the the whole concept of astrology and how it operates, not only for you as individuals, but for us as a collective. Now, have, have, I'm sure many of you have heard of uh, Myers-Briggs, right? And have taken that. Now, that is a personality test. And so that, that Myers-Briggs was actually um, developed from the work of depth psychologist Carl Jung. And astrology, is another one of Carl Jung's tools that he used with his clients. And so this Myers-Briggs, what did it do? It gave us an idea of like what type of personality we were, um, what are some of our strengths and weaknesses, and how to be performing better in life. And so astrology does actually the same thing because it is also, the planets are based on archetypal references. And so when I go through the chart of the United States, I'm going to explain some of that to you to help you understand and to see what the personality of the United States um, is. And I think that's a really good place to start. And then once we can create some framework around that, I really believe that that's going to help you to see not only just some of the shadow aspects of the country, but also some of the positive light sides of the country. And when I mean shadow, I mean that which is unconscious, that which we don't realize that we're doing. And here's the really fascinating thing is that we look at United States and we don't always see it as um, a body of energy. The United States is actually us. Every single one of us makes up the personality of the United States of America. For example, if you take another country, and, and I don't want to pick on any other countries or anything like that, but we, you go to another country and there's a vibe about it. There's a vibration in which the culture of the people live. And you go to another country and it has another, another way in which it feels. And that's the personality of that country. Just like when you go to a, um, a group and let's say you joined a new book club and you, you go to the book club and you say, yeah, you know, they're just not my people. So the personality of that group just doesn't resonate with you. There isn't an alignment. Does that make sense? Okay. So when we look at the chart of the United States, 
I'm going to look at it as if it were a personality because it is and it has one. So I'm going to break that down for you. And then as I move further into the talk, I'm going to talk about where it is headed in terms of its challenges, its growths, and how we can navigate that more clearly for ourselves as individuals and also as a collective. Um, so many influential people actually used astrology throughout the years. One of them was Benjamin Franklin, believe it or not, uh, Thomas Jefferson, and as I said, um, the depth psychologist Carl Jung, he's the one that actually coined many words that it's in our culture today. For example, synchronicity, archetype, collective unconscious. He's responsible for the whole archetypal, I'm going to say, um, culture that has developed today, because now you hear that word a lot, whereas you never used to. Is everybody familiar of what an archetype is? Yes? Okay. Well, I'm going to go over it just a little bit, just because I want to make this sure that when I explain the United States that you can see this in a very open-minded perspective. So when I say the archetype mother, like what comes to mind? And I don't need you to answer, but just think about what comes to mind when you hear that. And what's very fascinating about when we hear an archetype is that we have our own ideas and patterns of what we think that is based on our own experience and our beliefs. The archetype of marriage, that's an archetype that's been under the microscope quite a bit because we have an old ideal of what we have developed as a culture to say what marriage is, that it is a relationship between a man and a woman. And that is has been challenged and continues to be challenged. And these archetypes, they're all based on our early childhood conditioning, domestication, what we were told by our parents, by school, by our um, religion, if that was something that was in our, um, in our environment growing up, by how we felt safe or not safe. We developed these whole ideas. Another archetype is like the queen. Like, what do you think of when you think of queen? Some people can think of it in a negative way and some people in a positive way, depending on what your experience of that is, of that archetype happens to be. So as far as astrology, astrology has a, you know a, many different reputations. And for the most part, it's not something that is really accepted and believed by mainstream. And I'm here to say that it is. it would be really irresponsible for me to say that I could predict what's going to happen, because that is impossible. Nobody can predict the future. Unless, of course, you're like Edgar Casey or Nostradamus or something like that, but I'm not here to say that. Um, so let's do this. Let's put up the chart of the United States. And I want to remind you, when you look at this chart, you're not going to know what you're seeing. And it doesn't matter because I'm going to explain a little bit to you, just enough so that you know the orientation of what I'm talking about. And I want to invite you to to wrap your head around the idea that the United States has a personality. And just like you and I, that personality is sometimes a nice personality. Sometimes it's frustrated. Sometimes it's angry. Sometimes it needs to um, heal some wounds that it has. And because of that, it will be um, like show up in ways where where there can be conflict. Okay, so the United States, July 4th, 1776 is the birth date of the, of the US. And the approximate time, this is based on what has been um, researched is that the time was 5.10 p.m. Okay, so what you're looking at here, you can see all these little, these are called glyphs. These are all the planets. And each one of the planets in our solar system represents a different archetypal meaning. Now, I'm not going to go through each one of them because that would be just way too much, but I'm going to point out a few of them. And I'm going to point out the ones that I think that most of you are going to be able to understand and relate to and be able to look at, like, for example, there's the sun of how we are struggling with a particular aspect of our personality as the United States of America. Does that make sense? Okay, good. So the first place I'm gonna start here is the sun. 
Now, the sun, as we know it, is like the biggest star in the, our solar system. And what does the sun do? It shines, it shines. And so in astrology, that is part of how we're meant to shine in the world. It's how we're meant to um, express our potential, express our possibility. And so with the sun sign here in the United States, it's in the sign of cancer. And what that means is cancer in its archetypal meaning is the archetypal mother. It is the great mother. So let's put this together. The United States, its intrinsic way of being is that it wants to be the caretaker and the nurturer for all because that's what the archetype of the mother is here to help us do. What does a mother do? It takes care of its children. It is very nurturing. It's loving. And that aspect right there is also can be played out in a way if in a very negative way where it can be the narcissist of the mother. It can be the codependent. It can be the enabler. It can be the whole concept of like mother knows best. Okay. And so what, because we all make up the United States, depending on what our beliefs are individually, that is what determines how this particular archetype shows up. How does it show up? Do we show up as the as the great mother who's here to take care of its children? Um, does it show up in, in a way that is more like the, um, the mother that's who's the narcissist? It's all about me. I, I, I'm the one that needs the attention. I'm the one that needs all of the, um, you know, everybody give me the, the kudos for what I do. And we all may have experienced mother like that, have had mothers like that. But that is a piece right here that is determines a lot about how um, we are seen even by other people. You know, are we the, you know, when, when things happen in the world, we tend to be the country that goes and helps other countries. And sometimes that's to, um, sometimes to our detriment. And sometimes it's for our own self-serving reasons. Okay. And so if you look at the mother archetype in its personality, separate from even just the United States, that's one of the shadow aspects of mother. Because when mother's in shadow, what she does is that she, she may come across as helping, but it's all self-serving. And so that's where you have like, okay, so where are we as a country in terms of the personality of this particular archetype? Are we the great mother that wants to help everybody at times possibly? Or do we go to the other side of where, how can I help myself by helping you? Does that make sense? Okay. So that's the sun in the chart. And, and because like I said, the sun is the biggest star, that's the overarching like view and reputation of what this body of energy the United States possibly has to other people and even to some of us. So it can go both ways. There's no like, oh, it's this way or that way. I'm not, when, I, when I'm up here talking about this, I'm not putting any type of judgment either way. I'm just saying, okay, you guys make your own decision for yourself of where you feel that is and maybe where we need to change things to bring it more into the light of it, bring it more into the conscious, bring it more into a much more healthy way of expressing ourselves as a country versus a unhealthy, dysfunctional way of expressing ourselves. You guys with me? Okay, so let me look at my notes. Um, let's get the next place. Oh, okay, let's go here. Let's go to this guy up here. So that little glyph is actually the planet Saturn. And wherever Saturn is in an astrological chart is where there's gonna be some kind of struggle. And it's going to feel like I'm not quite adequate in this area. I feel doubt in this area. So I'm going to overcompensate or undercompensate. And an overcompensation would be where we're too much of something, right? Where undercompensation is, is that this is an area maybe where there is some weakness. And of course, weakness can show up on both sides. But so what that is, that piece right there means is that is Libra. And Libra is the sign of justice. 
It is the sign of relationships, of partnerships. How do we treat each other? How do we interact with each other? So the combination of this in a personality would be someone who is either overbearing in relationships, someone who is struggling to find equality in a relationship, someone who feels that they are the authority of other people and who will wield power over others. That's that's the shadow side of this. That's the unconscious side of a personality of something like this. So the United States, as we all kind of know, like this, these are some similar, or these are some um, familiar things that I'm saying here, is that because there is a sense of not feeling powerful, we have to overcompensate, or one would have to overcompensate to feel more powerful. And therefore, it, would, it will wield power over others in order for itself to feel power, which is a very distorted use of power. And that's one of the things that in our country today, I think we all can agree on that we're struggling with. We're struggling with power. And how do we wield power? How we're wielding power over others in order for us to feel that we are powerful, whether it is whether it is um, as a country as a whole, or just in terms of our government of one political party versus another political party, who can power over each other. And so I would venture to say, and maybe I'd get some agreement here that that's definitely one of our struggles that we're dealing with right now. How do we deal with authority? Because the truth about authority is that it isn't about wielding power over someone else. It's about power within. And that is part of the unconsciousness of what is happening for us right now is that we are looking at power from a distorted view. So this part of the personality of the United States is a big piece where we're struggling and it's power. And what goes with power? Fear. When we have power over another person, we incite fear. All right. I'm going to look at this one down here. This little glyph right here is the moon. And the moon, the, that what what um, what part that plays is that has everything to do with how we feel. Whereas this is who we are as a personality in a country, and this is where we feel struggle. This down here is like how do we feel? Okay, how, how does the personality feel? Well, the personality down here, it wants to know like, where exactly does it fit? Who are my people? What is my community? There's a part of this personality here of the feeling is that um, I really wanna get along with everybody, but I'm having to have a hard time accepting everybody because not everybody looks like I do. And I really want everybody to be like me because therefore I feel safe. And anybody that looks different or does things differently feels like a threat to my emotional security. And we can see this played out just in our country. We can see this played out in our relationship to other countries that our security is feeling threatened. And not to say that isn't the truth on some level, but if we haven't dealt in our own personality of what that is for us and how we exercise that on an unconscious level, we're gonna constantly feel that we're at the effect and that we're always under threat. So the last place I go, I'm gonna go here is I'm gonna talk about this one right here. And that's the planet Pluto. And anywhere Pluto is in an astrological chart is where there's gonna be some kind of archetypal wound. And this is a big piece right here. When I was doing the studying for this, you know, I've done the chart of the United States several times, but I dove a little deeper into it this time because I, just because of where we're at in the world right now. And so Pluto is in Capricorn. And I'm gonna describe what the archetype of Capricorn is. It is hard work. It is purpose. It is production. This energy here of this chart of the United States and the personality says, you know what? We've come here to be productive, to have a purpose, to work hard. 
And because of the placement of where it is, the other thing it adds to it is our value systems are really important to us and that these values must be honored and respected and we must have integrity. And we, be, we must be willing to work hard for whatever it is that we desire that we want. But the other thing it does is that because this is, we're looking at like the foundation. Well, let me back up. Okay, so when, when you were born, you were born into your family and your family determined and shaped who you became in the world. So if you lived in an environment where it was loving and kind, then that helped to shape your reality and how you saw life and what you experienced. But if you grew up in a family where there was a lot of struggle and there was a lot of fear, then that too shaped your reality. And so every family system has a value system in which they have put and developed and we have grown with in our upbringing. So if a value in a family was that you're going to go to school and you're going to go to college and you're going to get a, you know, you get a good education, you get a good job, then that's how that, how you, that's how that was um, the value system of that family. If you were in a family maybe that struggled and there wasn't that support because the parents were educated, that's going to be determined how your life path goes as well and some of the challenges and struggles that you will deal with. So for example, if you grew up in a family where racism was an issue, where homophobia was an issue and it wasn't accepted, that's gonna be some of the challenges that you face. And so because we're talking about the United States as um, an entity, as a personality, it's like look, we look at the roots in which our country was built upon and some of those things, we could talk about slavery, we could talk about racism, those are part of the value systems in which our country was built upon, okay? And sure, not all of us are on the same page with that today, but those have been instilled from the root, from the beginning. And so what that piece right there is saying that this is part of our greatest wound here is that we need to heal our values. We need to reevaluate our values. And so what was so fascinating about how you know, like, for example, when the pandemic hit and I was following the astrological cycles of what was happening prior to the pandemic in 2019, at the end of the year, I decided I was going to do a live event on um, on Zoom. And I wanted to talk about the astrology that was going to be occurring in February, March of 2020. And I did that live event. And what I learned in my research was that something was going to go down. I didn't know what it is because I can't predict that. I can't figure out. I don't have a crystal ball, but I knew something big was going to happen. And so I did this live event. And one of the things that I mentioned was that there's going to be some kind of Darwinian situation that's going to happen. And, and I didn't want to scare people, but at the same time, I wanted I wanted my listeners to know something's going down and we don't know what, and it's gonna be big and it's gonna last a while because this is what the cycle is saying. And then two months later, we have COVID-19. And one of the things that came from, that is still coming from COVID-19 is that our resources, and that's what this piece here that I'm talking about, it's our value system, but it's also our resources. And that that was going to be affected. And so what's come of this and what continues to come is now we're trying to figure out our value system. What is most important? And that's where things have become so separated and divided. I mean, there's so many other things, but this is a really big piece here that I want to point out because this is part of our archetypal wound as a country. So now I'm going to take it back to the personal. What I was saying earlier, those of us you know, we all grew up in a particular type of family and those experiences, some of us have gone to therapy because we have needed to heal certain things that happened to us as children. And that's, I want you to kind of just think about that in terms of how I'm presenting this today, because the United States is healing some stuff, some trauma that it has gone through. And think about how difficult it is sometimes to heal that trauma. And as I said at the beginning of my talk, we're living in a pivotal time right now. Like we all came into this time place and we are really looking at um, a revolution here in terms of who we are as a people. 
All right, so can you put the other chart up for me, Jeff? I'm gonna, I wanna um, show something. So this, this chart that I just showed you was um, the based on 1776. This second chart is the one that you just saw is now shrunk to the center and on the outside, you could look at the date. It's, it's today's date. I, well, you can't see, it doesn't matter. Um, I ran this chart for today's date that where are all the planets today as we speak? Because they are not in the same spot. And so what that tells us, what that tells me as an astrologer helps me is, okay, what are some of the themes that we're dealing with right now because of the timing of what things are, okay? So I'm gonna go back a little bit in history. The planet Pluto that is very far away from us takes 248 years to circle the sun. Where Pluto is today in the chart of the United States is the same place it was when the American Revolution was fought. Now that's big. When 9-11 happened, Pluto was in a position on that chart and, and it's the planet Saturn was in another position. I know those, that those words really don't mean a whole lot in orientation, but just for, the, for describing these um, synchronicities, 9-11 happened and astrologers saw something was gonna happen. Cannot predict what's gonna happen, but there's some kind of archetypal forces that are gonna create some change and disruption in the world. Remember, I think it was, was it a year ago, two, or two years ago when they had, we had that Jupiter-Saturn conjunction in the sky and astronomers, all that. Um, so like those type of things that astronomers, you know, calculate, we as astrologers bring archetypal meaning to those types of things. For example, um, if you go back in time and you look at where you were around age 29, 30, that was an actual and also 58, 59, 60, those are big points in our life. Usually something happens. Some of us have children, we get married, we're making some decision in our life early on around that time. Those are, those are all archetypal um, astrology points. So, all right, let me go to present now. So here's that Pluto piece I was talking about. And this is where it is right now, 27 degrees, 29 degrees. That's considered a conjunction, just like that um, Jupiter and Saturn alignment happening last year, whenever that was. And so Pluto, Plutonian energy, what does it do? It blows things up. What must die? What must change? Pluto is considered the archetype of the dredger. It also is um, related to Hades. That's the other thing about um, the planets is that's what Carl Jung brought to the language of astrology is every planet had some Greek mythology associated with it. And the planet Pluto is Hades, the god of the underworld. And so what does Hades do? Hades goes into the under or Hades lives in the underworld underworld. And so symbolically, archetypically, it's about dredging all of the darkness to the surface. And we did have a president that said, we're gonna drain the swamp. And I'm not, I, I'm taking no political like affiliation here, but as an over like arching theme that's happening, doesn't matter what side you're on, that's what's trying to happen is that we are, we are, we are needing to drain the swamp, doesn't matter what side of the political equation that you're on has nothing to do with the messenger that delivered that, that line that I just said. But that's what Pluto's doing. It's bringing all of the stuff to the surface. So when we look at what's happening in our culture right now, what's happening in our country, what's happening in the world, the timing is so right on for change. And we know that, we feel it, and we're threatened by it. And that's the thing about this planet Pluto. It's a very, it's also the planet of, of death and rebirth. As I said earlier, what must die? So there's a lot of fear associated. So it brought this fear to the surface because what we do know, and I hope we all know in this room that the opposite of fear is love. And I'm not trying to sound all like kumbaya or anything like that, but that is the truth. And if we're not in if we're not in love, we are in fear in some way. We're fearing something. 
And it is in a placement of where we're dealing with, I said earlier, our value systems, our resources. And if we look at our resources today and some of how our resources are being, you know, we can, the cost of, of going to the grocery store and buying certain things are going up. Um, the, the ability to access certain things that we need, products that we couldn't, that we can't get or that we can no longer get is what's starting to surface. But where is that really all rooted? Where is it rooted? I'm going to say it's rooted in greed. And greed is also an aspect of fear, scarcity, scarcity mindset. I, is there going to be enough? Is there enough for me? Is there enough for everybody? And that is a mindset. And we have bought into it. We have made that part of our value system without even realizing that's part of our value system in terms of what this astrolo astrological chart um, shows us. You guys with me on this? <laughs> okay. Um, hang on, let me go. I want to... Make sure I didn't miss anything. So I want to talk a little bit about more about this Pluto piece right here. And that's kind of where I'm going to keep a lot of my focus on because this is the big turning point. This is all part of that revolution. And so what does that mean? Well, what it means, because this is the archetype of also systems and how systems are run, what we're looking at, of course, is our economic system, our money system our educational system and how even big pharma, like how these big institutional companies, corporations, like they're the ones that are being challenged really at this time because what we're looking at is also, because this is also rep represents the patriarch, that those patriarchal systems that we have had in place can no longer survive the new, the new like times that we're moving into. Because here's one of the things that I have um, that I've come to understand is that we can only live the same way for a period of time. And then we're going to be asked to do something differently, to grow and to evolve. And ultimately, that is what's trying to happen here is that we are trying to grow and evolve. Just like when you as individuals, you know, going through your life and you're trying to work through something and you're being pushed in directions that don't feel comfortable. Like we get pushed out of things because it's time for us to go. We get fired from a job. We get laid off because it's time for us to go. When you go and you look back and say, oh, wow, had that not happened, this would have never happened for me. But if we want to stay the same, then we're going to continue to feel um, the pressure of being the same. So what this is saying here for us in terms of time, that it is, it's just time. It's time. It's time to blow things up. And so I'll, I'll have people say to me sometimes like, oh, when is this going to end? It ends when we change, when we've changed enough of the narrative and enough of the people to get everything to look differently, to feel differently, to be differently. Does that make sense? Okay. So the other thing I want to look at here, you can see this is 28 degrees. This is 27 degrees. This is another piece that's happening for us is where our security is feeling very threatened. Remember I talked about earlier how the this moon, how we feel is all about you know, do I feel comfortable in this group? Um, can I accept people that don't look like me or don't feel like me or have the same thoughts? Um, that's one of these pieces that's also being um, like really squeezed for us is it, it's like, it, it's such a paradox because when we're trying to find the middle ground on something, we actually began by having two different polarities, the separation. And while the separation is very uncomfortable, the, sometimes that's the only way that we can come to the middle place is by being able to see this perspective and this perspective and have these two opposing perspectives. And that's what's happening here. That's what this is saying, is that 
How have we limited ourselves as a country by seeing things from just one side of the, um, you know, of the of the lens? How are we on time? Okay, okay, good. I forgot what time we started, so I looked the clock and it's just kind of, we're at 11.15 and we started at 10.30. Okay, cool. Uh, let's see, what else do I need to cover here for you guys? Um, the one thing that we all can agree on, I'm sure, is that change is constant and that this that I've been talking about here, as far as the timeline and when all that's going to shift, this, this 2023 year is going to be a big pivotal year for us because what choices we make during this time, it's, we're all going to see those come into um, form in 2024. And the timing of it, of course, is also happens to be the presidential election in 2024 of what that's gonna look like. And so what we do during this next, this year happening is going to determine that. Of course, it's like, well, yes, of course, of course it's gonna determine it, but it's gonna determine it in another way on a bigger picture because we're gonna be making a decision of how we're going to create the future for us. We've been breaking down the future. That's what this astrology is, is saying, that we have been breaking down the structure because it needs to be broken down. And so where will it lead um, in 2024? Well, that will all determine of what transpires during 2023. And I know I, I might be sounding like, oh, I speak in the obvious, like give me some more like details to that, but that would be prediction. I, I can't do that. What we can do, though, is look at some of the things that I spoke about today is our value systems. What are your value systems? Not what you want other people to do so you feel comfortable, but even looking at our own personal um, value systems, because it isn't until we change individually, we make different choices in our life, or we open up to new ideas in our life that things are going to change. Otherwise, it won't. We can't expect them to do it out there. We have to do it from inside. It's an in, inside job. Um, what else do I want to touch on here? Oh, this is another piece I think will be kind of interesting. This point right here in the chart, that point in astrology speaks to how one is perceived by other people and how we feel we have to fit in in the world. And so the United States as a personality, how the United States comes across to a lot of people, it's like that piece says, oh, I'm here to save the day. Let me, let, let's, let's have a good time. Let's, let's supersize things. Let's have fun and play. And, you know, the, the United States is a really amazing country, right? And we do have this attitude of, you know, let's have a good time, let's party, um, you know, let's um, overindulge. It's definitely the hedonist archetype. There's a lot of hedonism in this, in this um, piece right here. Um, and so that really also speaks to how things can get, like, over, like, enough. Do I have enough? And that's one of the things that I think in the shadow of the United States of this piece right here, that it can be like an overindulgence, an overindulgence of life and, and not going back to things that are more simple. Because that's what, that's what that would be. It would be, can we take things more to live more simply? and not feel that we have to have the bigger, better car, because that's part of the, the, what has got us into the situation that we are in today, is that we always want more, more, more. And so taking, taking a look at that, not just as, as you know, blaming the, the country for it, but to take our own responsibility of what that could look like, because that's a really important piece there for us as a country. 
And in this chart, if I was looking at it in terms of like um, somebody that I was speaking to who wasn't a country, I would be making that comment. It's like, okay, so where are you living in scarcity that you feel that you have to more have more because there's something within you that doesn't feel fulfilled? And that's what it boils down to, fulfillment. And we become to a point um, in our society where we feel, we fill the void of, that feels empty with stuff. We do it with stuff. And that speaks, goes back to this resources, stuff. There's not enough stuff. How interesting it is that, the, that some of the very wounds of the country of wanting more, and then we go into, a, um, into something of opposite that where our resources are not readily available. You know, we're running out of things. And we will continue to run out of things only because it's the nature of consumption. And we, and this, this, that's right there, that's consumption. That's consumption. And so how do we, how do we change that, right? How do we make that difference? You know, one of the things that um, this, this tool has really helped me to, to, to see is that when I look at something like this, I'm able to look at it from a place of neutrality. And so I can step back and look at it and say, even if it was the chart of the United States or it was um, an individual, there doesn't have to be judgment because we all have a path and we all have a struggle. And the United States has its own path. It's has, it has its own destiny. And so to bring judgment upon that is really not a fair evaluation of an individual or even as a country. I think it's really important for us to be as, to start out to be as neutral as we can, and then to look at it from okay, these are some of the, these are some of our um, of our unconscious behavior. This is some of our shadow behavior. How can we? What can I do different to help some of this shadow within me? Because it's like synchronicity. Everybody knows what synchronicity is, right? When things outside um, circumstances are just lining up. But the true meaning of synchronicity, as Carl Jung um, described it, synchronicity is what's in with, with what is within me, I see outside of myself. And so what you're seeing, we can blame what we're seeing outside of ourselves. But what we need to do is point the finger inward, because that is the reality then, because what is within is what we'll see outside. So I'm going to go ahead and stop right now and see if there's any questions that anybody has or curiosities about anything that I spoke about today. Thanks, Teresa. We'll have two mics going on over here, and we have a question right up here. Mm -hmm. I'm just curious about when you look at a grandioso picture like the United States, do you ever take into account retrograde? And what would happen if retrograde happened, let's say, during an election? Absolutely. So she asked a really technical question, and it probably won't um, be able to be understood possibly by everybody because it's a very technical question that you said. And yes, I'm just going to say, yes, it will take into account and it will affect things. Absolutely. Um, are you seeing anything in the chart about the age of reason? Uh -huh. Yes. So um, great question, Judy. Um, so the age of reason began about the time of the Renaissance. And so what is occurring presently is that we are moving into adopting more of the age of energy where we cannot me necessarily measure things, where things are don't necessarily have to have a reason, that it doesn't have to be proven because there's some things that we just can't prove. And we are so... We are so conditioned to like, can you see it, taste it, touch it, or feel it? Because if you can, it's not real. And so that's what's also wanting to emerge here is the unseen world, which is not about reason. It is about energy. Uh, can you speak a little bit more about the um, archetypal type? What, what are the archetypes? We talked about the mother. What are other archetypes? And in reference to what? Like the planets? in reference to what are the general archetypes? Oh, just like a general archetype? Yeah, for example, um, the father, death is an archetype. 
there are thousands and thousands of archetypes. Um, the government is an archetype. So that is what an archetype is. There's the princess, right? There's the king. Those are all archetypes. Does that help? Can you define what retrograde is? Yes. Okay. Again, a technical question, but I'm going to answer it. So a retrograde is actually when, because um, planets don't go in a complete circle, right? I mean, they're, they're kind of can go out how they orb in the, um, in the, solar system. So what it actually does when it's kind of making that egg shape, it's it seemingly slows. People think it stops, but it doesn't stop. It slows, so it retrogrades. So then where it is in relationship to other planets, it's almost like it's backing up because the other planets are continuing forward. Does that make sense? Couple of, couple of questions. Um, that chart actually is two specific dates. How much would it change tomorrow, a week from now, in terms of the conjunctions? And secondly, just out of curiosity, because I always like to look at my horoscope a week later, um, what did the chart look like on January 6, 2021? Yeah, I, well, I'd have to run that 2021 date you just um, mentioned. But yes, it will change. So because the, the planets are um, like Mercury, Venus, Mars, they're closer to us. They move more quickly. The moon moves more quick, quickly. It, it changes from, from one place to another, like within three days. And then Pluto and Uranus and Neptune, they're further away. So yeah, if we were to speed that up um, from a year from now, Pluto will probably move about two degrees, whereas the sun will be completely in another position. Does that make sense? Yeah. Thank you. It was fascinating, uh, but I'm confused. Uh, wh where, what is the underlying correlations that you see? I heard you talk about architectural, archetypical forces. Uh, and so, what what do you see as the relationship between the planets in any particular date uh, and what's happening here on Earth, and yeah. how, would, how are those related? Yes. Okay. I, I do see how, as an explanatory basis, it's very, can be very revealing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm, hopefully I heard, understood your question correctly, so I'm gonna answer it this way, and then you correct me if we'll make the adjustment. So the, what I explained here, like with Pluto, these are the underlying forces. This is what's moving the energy and causing the discomfort in the country because we're talking about the chart of the United States. If it were your chart, for example, and I looked at this, I'm like, oh, okay, this is where you're having definitely some discomfort right now and where you're being pushed out into a place where it doesn't feel safe necessarily because you're having to change. Life is saying, it's time for you to change. It's time for you to get out of that pattern you've been in for years. Because this is what I have come to understand about life. Life supports us all the time. It may not feel like it, but it does. And it is going to push us to potential and possibility. We are constantly being pushed to potential and possibility. And so these underlying archetypal forces are doing that. That's why this outer ring, that's what it's showing us. Pluto's saying, we got to blow this up. This is not okay, what you're doing right now. Does that help? <laughs> Can you ask your question differently? What's the cause and effect between where planets are and uh, how architectural forces, archetypical forces are somehow uh, affecting our behavior or our country's behavior. What do the planets have to do with what we're... Oh, that's a better way. Yeah, okay, I get that. <laughs> right. What, well, they're celestial bodies of energy. We have parts of them within us. We're all connected. And these archetypal forces that are out there because they do have influences on us. And this is this also could be, uh, this is where either 
it feels in alignment or it doesn't for you as an individual. Because this is something that not necessarily can be proven. Just like what I gave the example about Myers-Briggs, that is, those are based on archetypes. Do you believe it? Do you feel resonance? Yes, no. That's how you determine. That, that's what helps determine whether this feels like an accurate, true resonance with you inside. So I can't say, well, this is exactly why this has happened. And this is actually the question that Judy asked me, the age of reason versus energy. This is energy. And that's what we're moving to. We're moving to being open to energy because the forces in our healing environment of how we heal, medicine is not enough. Medicine is amazing. But how can we bring in the concept of energy medicine to our culture? Does that help? Oh. I get the for energy. Yeah. And that energy somehow translates. And that energy is, uh, is forces. So, for example, if you're around somebody and it's like they've got a bad, like, oh, they're so negative. That's their energy. And if you're around them all the time, their energy affects you. Sure. If he... Okay. Uh, I, I, can, can I add real quick to um, what Teresa was just saying? So each planet has personality associated with it. So that personality that you see, so each planet, Sun, Moon, uh, Pluto, Libra, all of them have personalities and they affect you. Let's talk about Moon, for example. When we have Moon closest to our planet, we have huge tides, right? So it physically affects our planet. So it also affects, pardon for details, women's cycles. So we are affected by those planets physically, we know this, but we're also affected by the planets emotionally, spiritually, whatever you want to call it. And again, it depends on what the planet the closest to us right now and where it is in your chart. Those celestial, celestial bodies were there for thousands of years. And if you go back to places, for example, like ancient Egypt, they had astrological charts in their temples 5,000 years ago. That's where it actually started, so to the best of my knowledge. <laughs> no, that's awesome. Thank you for bringing up the example about the moon, because the moon, exactly. the tides, because we're so much water, it affects our um, our feelings and our emotions. As, as a spiritual advisor, if you had three bits of advice to give to us today based on the chart of the United States, what would you tell us? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a wonderful question. Thank you. Um, I would say the first thing is, and this is going to sound like a big thing that may be hard to do, <clears throat> is not to take this so personally, not to make it so personal. Because here's what happens. It doesn't mean that these things and, and how we're seeing this don't feel personal. But when we go into taking things so personal, we become victims of it. So that's the first thing I'd say. The second thing is that to self-reflect, to look at your own personal life and maybe some things of where you're not aware of some of your own shadow tendencies. Because when we change, the world changes. Um, the third thing is to be open and willing to see life through a different lens. And I think that's the one of the big pieces is that we are so stuck in our how we view life that we cannot if we if we can't see it, taste it, touch it, feel it, or hear it, it's not real. And that is not true. That is a limited perspective of life, a limited perspective of how we experience life if we stay within that box. And that's what's trying to happen here is to blow that box up. Thank you. Yeah, I just wanted to ask in in your world there in your theory, um, what is the where does human agency come in? Where where does my own will to do something? In other yeah. words, uh, are we helpless puppets to the stars? I don't think so. Um, and that that's one question. The other question I had is in your uh, showing of the circle of the United States as personality and then the stars up there. What about the other nations 
And what about things like the world economy and other, I mean, theoretically, you could make a chart for lots of different force fields and they would all be going wild in their, you know, influencing each other. I mean, you've picked a few circles to show us, but there, with your theory, there are billions of circles that could be influencing everything. So, but I'm particularly interested in the issue of individual agency. Yeah, free will. We have free will. So in there that the moment of the United States' birth was a time when free will, the concept of free will was very, very important to the enlightenment and all the thinking that, that went on behind our constitution. Absolutely, I, I agree with you. And so the second piece that you were, yeah, so what you could do, what I could do is I can pull up um, Russia and we can combine the two charts with the United States and see how they, what, where their um, struggles and where their, um, how they interact with each other. It's like, it's a relationship chart, basically. Husband and wife, throw it up there, you know? Oh, this is gonna be some of the struggles that they experience in their relationship. Because it's all, it, we're all relationships. And so you can pull countries up there, exactly. But yes, free will for the first, we have choice. One last question. You know, I'm sure you know that the United States was not really born on July 4th, 1776. If you ask John Adams, if you study the history, the signing actually took more than two weeks. Yes, it did. Spaces, okay? Yes. So, so, so if you were to now create a chart based on some, I don't know, analysis, try different dates, different times, um, how would that be different? How would the United States personality be perceived differently uh, based on, you know, when you might conceive or you might think when the United States was conceived, some people might argue it was conceived actually in 1773, mm -hmm. you know, let alone 1776, uh, when the first constitutional Congress even started. Um, and a somewhat related thing, you can also ask, if you look at the chart for the British Empire, or the Roman Empire, or the Ottoman Empire, all these empires, like the American Empire, has had its times and has charts associated with them. How would they be different? So, somewhat following what Lynn asked, you know, uh, but at least look at those entities as a whole, uh, how they changed, how they evolved, uh, and how the stars affected them. Assuming, of course, you can find a date when they were born, the British Empire or the Roman right. Empire. Right, right. So I'm going to answer the first part of your question. That's a great question. Most people don't know that. And that is something, actually, that has been debated in terms of the astrological world. And so the reason why I use this time and this date is because it has, through all the studies that have been done, has been um, viewed as the most accurate in terms of how, what we have observed about the United States as an individual. So, as a body of energy. And our last question for today, Judy. Hi. Um, the general perception of people that do new thought is that when you're not doing astrology, you know, you're sitting there in a yoga pose. <laughs> But you're an Iron Man participant. <laughs> so would you tell us what an average Iron Man event would be like? Uh, sure. Yes. Thank you, Judy. So for those of you who don't know what an Iron Man is, it is a triathlon. <clears throat> it is a combination of swim, bike, and run. And you do this all in the same day, one right after each other. So it is a 2.4 mile swim. And then you get on your bike and you do a 112 mile bike ride. And then the next thing you do is you put your running shoes on and you run a whole marathon. <laughs> 26.2 miles. Yes. When did you do this? So, well, it's uh, my partner and I, he and I do this and we've been doing this sport for about the last 10 years plus something like that. So you've done multiple Ironmans? Yes, I have done multiple Ironmans. And there's also the half distance, which is a 1.2 mile swim, which is the more common one that I do, um, a 56 mile bike, and then a half marathon. So all they're all over the world. Yeah. <laughs> Gabriel wanted to know what planet was helping or what energy from what planet. Okay. No, I have not. Have you done it? The Alcatraz swim. <laughs> no, that's 
You can come with me. I'm going to be taking that boat ride to Alcatraz, and you come with me. We want to thank all of you for joining us today for the symposium. Teresa, thank you for such a thought, uh, thought uh, provoking presentation. We hope you'll have a good time. We'll see you for Katie next week.